Hi, Ritwik. Good afternoon. So, first of all, congratulations. You are headed to ISB. Thank you very much. Your work experience and, um, you know, what are the aspirations you had and how did you plan on choosing the colleges that you applied to? So, uh, I am from a computer science background. I completed my graduation in computer science. And then I got a campus placement to Shell uh, as a business analyst. So, there it was a techno-functional role. Uh, where I had been uh, enabling softwares for the entire organization. I was into the business operation side of Shell. Uh, and my role as a business analyst was to uh, understand uh, day in and day out, interact with the uh, numerous stakeholders, understand what expectations and uh, what is their uh, uh, requirement for a particular software and of how that software could be used for Shell. Uh, and you know, work with the development team and the entire testing team to uh, deliver the expectations of, for that software. So that is my work profile. I have been in Shell for the past two, two and a half years. And uh, during at my uh, time at my Shell, I have always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And to pursue that same journey, I uh, wanted to be uh, get into a business school uh, where I can actually learn strategy and marketing and things about operations and running a, a business so that I can take a step towards it. Yeah, that's my profile. So in this journey, uh, you know, when you started off with the MBA preparation, you first took the GMAT, you got a score. What were the apprehensions with respect to the score or with respect to the profile? Because if you look at the average work experience, your work experience is slightly lesser than that vis-a-vis -vis what ISB looks for or what is the average at ISB basically. So, you know, what were the apprehensions and then how did you work on the personal brand for the application? So, I do understand that uh, my work experience was less but then I personally believe that since ISB considers two years at least a minimum, that means uh, people do get in with a two year of experience and it's not something which is impossible to achieve. And uh, secondly, I was also uh, focused on giving my GMAT. I actually took three attempts at GMAT and it took me almost a year to you know, get to the score I wanted uh, to get. Uh, my initial attempt was a 640. It was quite disappointing for me. I did, you know, change my strategy and uh, I scored a 700 and then finally I got a 710. And I felt that a 710 would uh, do me justice uh, for the B schools I was applying. And since I want to be an entrepreneur and my goals are to be build a business in India, I wanted to stay in India and uh, learn from one of the best schools in India. So ISB was the only school that I applied to. And uh, I had a belief that I could get in. And, you know, that really helped me keep myself motivated and work as much as I could. What were the GMAT preparation strategies? So uh, this was a, actually a very good point that you brought up. You had to write the GMAT thrice and it was a long journey. It was not like it is possible for everybody to do it in three months and then they should not give it up. So what were the strategies that worked for you to go from a 640 to a 710 uh, on the GMAT? On the GMAT, the most important thing was a, a schedule because a lot of people they are in their full-time jobs and then they, they need to uh, take out some time to uh, study for the GMAT and that becomes very uh, hectic but then uh, I stuck to a schedule and I am a morning person I, I can easily wake up at 6 or 7 in the morning and my work starts at 10. I did have 2 to 3 hours you know right in the morning to uh, prepare for my GMAT and maybe an hour in the evening that would really uh, help give me a sense of achievement right in the morning that I've been uh, productive. It's barely 9 a.m. and I'm already uh, done so much uh, of my uh, part. That way, fixing a schedule really helped me uh, being focused on my goal. And then, uh, you know, continuously taking mock exams uh, to understand what are my key strengths and what are my key weaknesses and what do I really need to work on. That really helped me, uh, you know, focus on my weak areas. We worked on the application and you know, when it comes to the application and the interview preparation, what are the important steps in this uh, preparation? How did you work on your personal brand and tell your story in the application? What really helped me is the introspection part. Because uh, if I just start sit and start uh, thinking about what I have uh, done in life, I'll probably end up not uh, be able to uh, you know bring out a lot of stories. What really helped me is uh, when you shared a questionnaire with me, uh, 
uh, going through those questions, spending time on the, them and, you know, really thinking and brainstorming on what actually I did in those circumstances and what are the circumstances that I call as, as a success and why do I call them a success? That really helped me uh, bring out a lot of instances. And by the time I completed that questionnaire, I had so many uh, instances about my life, which uh, I could really easily identify and I could keep on pinpoints that, yes, these are the points that uh, highlight, these are the points that are my strengths. For people who are starting off on this uh, journey now, who are you know planning to apply to the MBA programs and just getting done with their GMATs, what are some tips and suggestions that you'd like to share with them based on your experience? The entire reason I, I uh, wanted a, a professional consultant was because uh, I needed guidance. I did not know how it happened or how can I write an effective uh, application. I mean, sure, I could write an uh, application and uh, my first task with you was to just uh, write whatever I knew. But then there were so many changes and the uh, final version of the uh, my essay was nowhere near to the original version. And that was because of perspectives. I could have a perspective and I could keep writing about it, but then it could be very different from what a person who's reading it might have. So having that, uh, you know, professional perspective really helped me, you know, channel my thoughts and uh, draft an essay. And for the future MBA applicants, uh, what would be your, the, your tips or insights that you'd like to share with them? I would say that, yes, GMAT is a really important part of the uh, MBA journey, but then it's not everything. If Even if you have a decent enough uh, GMAT score, like anything above a 700, it should do. But then how you uh, present yourself to the MBA school, uh, how you highlight your stories and how you really showcase that the challenges that you've faced and how did you overcome them and what did you learn from them? That would really help the B school understand where are you coming from and how much potential do you have? I mean, uh, the most important thing would be uh, actually believing in, you know, that you can do it because sometimes manifestation do actually help. Even if you, there are doubts, uh, other people tell you that it's very difficult and you might not be able to get in only some people can get in but then it's important to believe that you can get in and then you need to make that kind of an effort to uh, actually uh, get to your goals but without believing it having a half-hearted approach would might affect your chances a lot right thank you so much thank you Ritwik, for your time